All right, let's go ahead and get started. You sent me lots and lots of requests to do problems. Problem number 10, 11, 14, 38, 39, 40, 42, 40, and 44. So that's lots of, lots of questions. Um, just want to make note that, that a lot of the questions that were submitted were just do this problem, do this problem, do this problem. That really doesn't help. That's not the intention behind the flipped class. The intention is you worked on it a little bit and you tried to figure it out and you asked me specifics about what you didn't understand, what you couldn't do. Okay, so, so try to do that in the, in the future. Some of you are doing a very good job with that. Um, some of you not so much, so, so just keep that in mind. Yep. I try to figure out what you don't understand rather than just throw answers to problems at you. Uh, so problem number 10, we have a scuba diver that's uh, training in a pool and he looks at his instructor, instructor in a picture uh, given in this figure. What angle does the ray from the instructor's face make with the perpendicular to the water at the point where the ray enters? And they tell you that the angle between the ray and the water and the perpendicular to the water is 25 degrees. So this one I think is probably difficult mainly because uh, you, you're not really sure what the picture's showing. So the picture basically looks like this. We have somebody standing up in air and somebody uh, sitting around in water. And we know that light behaves differently depending on what kind of material you're traveling through. And it travels differently because of something called the index of refraction. And in air, the index of refraction is 1.00. In water, the index of refraction is 1.33. So we'll just say air is N1 and the water is N2. Now to understand how this works, we know that light bends when it enters into a new medium. So to see how light bends, we draw a kind of basically a dotted line that's perpendicular to the surfaces. And then light's gonna come in at some specific angle. And that angle is re always relative to a perpendicular to the surface. So that's what your theta one is. And that light is gonna bend or refract when it goes into the water. So it's gonna bend at some other angle. That angle is also going to be due uh, relative to the, to the normal, to the surface. Okay. So can we see how the light just does, doesn't travel exactly straight? It's, it's bent a little bit. Okay. And that bending, we can actually quantify that using Snell's law. Snell's law. Does anybody remember what it, Snell's law tells us? Say it, and something. No. Perfect, N1 sine theta one is equal to N2 sine theta two. We were asked to find what is the angle that we're uh, entering the water with. So which, what, which one of those variables is that? What is the angle that we're entering the water with? N1, theta 1, N2, or theta 2? Which one theta, one. theta 1. Theta 1. So we need to find theta 1. So we need to solve this whole equation for theta 1. So I'll divide both sides by N1 to get the N1 onto the other side. I have sine of theta 1 equals N2 divided by N1 times sine of theta 2. And then I need to actually solve this for theta one. How do I, how do I do that? How do I get theta one by itself? Take the inverse sine, yeah. Theta one equals inverse sine of all of this, of N two over N one times sine of theta two. In the problem itself, let's see what they've given us. They they didn't directly give us this. They didn't directly tell us that N1 is equal to one and N2 is equal to 1.33. But they did tell us that N1 is in air and N2 is in water. So we know those. They told us that the angle inside of the water was equal to 25 degrees. So they gave us all the variables we need. So now we just plug and chug those variables in. Theta one is the inverse sine of 1.33 over 1. 
times sine of 25. So if you plug all your numbers in, you should find a theta 1 equal to 34.2. So in problem number 11, we have components of some commuting computers communicate with each other through optical fibers, having an index of refraction n equals 1.55. So they gave us an index of refraction. What time in nanoseconds is required for a signal to travel 0.2 meters through such a fiber? So I'm traveling some distance. Change in position is 0 0.2 meters. This one, I think, is difficult because it's uh, actually going back to physics one. It's using stuff in physics one and physics two. So we're traveling through a wire, a fiber optic now. What kind of things travel through a fiber optic? What kind of signal is this? What do we send through fiber optics? We do it in medicine all the time. What do we use in fiber optics? Light, we send light. So how fast does this light go? What's the speed of light? C equals three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That's how fast light goes in a vacuum. Inside of a fiber optic, the speed of light changes. Speed of light is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by whatever your index of refraction is. So I have to find how fast this light is going inside of the fiber optic. It's not going at light speed. Because light speed is specific to a vacuum. Same way that light travels differently and bends when you're in a different uh, medium, the speed changes too. So we have to figure out the new speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by the index of refraction of 1.55. That gives us our new velocity of light is 1.94 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So light is going significantly slower inside of this fiber optic. How can I use that? I was asked to find what is the change in time. How long is it going to take light that travels this fast to travel this distance? What can I do? Any guesses? Any idea? Use another formula. There's all sorts of formulas. I told you, they never go away. Physics sucks. You can't just set it and forget it. So what's, uh, what's the equation for velocity? How do we define velocity? What are the units of velocity? Meters over seconds. So that's a change in position divided by a change in time. I told you that nothing from physics one goes away. So I can use this equation and I can solve this for change in time. I move change in time to the other side and then divide both sides by V. So my change in time is going to be the change in distance divided by the velocity. That's going back to physics one. Which is a prereq which you all took and suffered through for five weeks. It's about five weeks, wasn't it? All of physics wanted something like five weeks. So change of position. What's the change of position? How far is this light going in the fiber optic? 0 0.2 meters. Perfect. And how fast does it go? 1.94 times 10 to the 8. So when we divide those numbers together, we get 1.03 times 10 to the negative 9 seconds. 
Which is 1.03 nanoseconds. I think in the question itself, they asked for the time in nanoseconds. Um, I don't care which way you put it. Your question's on number 11. Yeah, it's right there. How many points is number 11 worth on it? That's maybe two points. That's using a very, very basic definition from physics one. V equals V over Z, that's done. I should do a poll. Actually, this is how we'll determine it, how many points this is worth. Let me turn off the recording for this. Let's look at number 38. You know, I make these available for anybody. I guarantee that somebody is going to watch this video and see that we're doing number 14. And then they're going to ask, why didn't you do number 14? They're going to ask me in the comments to do it for them. People ask all sorts of weird things in these comments. I started speaking Spanish in my calculus-based physics class one. So now I get questions for people that want me to translate my videos into Spanish. Can you do this in Spanish for me? A focal length problem. So let's do, uh, what is uh, problem number 38? What is the focal length of 1.75 D reading glasses found on the rack in a pharmacy? So this is potentially useful for health options, health kinds of people. What is the focal length of 1.75 D reading glasses? F, if you have 1.75 D reading glasses. Let me be bold. Anytime I'm bold. What are the two types? Converging, diverging. Converging and diverging. So converging lens kind of uh, is, is bowed out in the middle. And if I have light that comes in, so let's have some yellow light come in. What is the, What is it going to do when it goes through this lens? It's going to converge. So it gets uh, kind of converged to a single point. That point where your light converges, that's the focal point. And the distance from the lens to that point is called the focal length. Okay. So that's what we're calculating. We're calculating how far the lens is. For a... Diverging lens. Diverging lens is a little trickier. Kind of is small in the middle. And we have light that comes in. And what's going to happen to the light that comes in? Is it going to go to a single point? No, it's going to diverge in the diverging lens. Go figure. So the light is going to go away. It's going to diverge. So then how do you have a focal point for this? It's on the other side. So you imagine that these kind of lens, these rays extend backwards. And there's a focal point that it looks like all those rays would have come from. That's the focal length of the, of the diverging lens. Okay. So we can calculate what the focal length of a lens is if we know the power of 1.75D using power is equal to 1 over F. So I shuffle this equation around, solve it for f. f is now equal to 1 over p. So f is 1 divided by 1.75, and that's equal to 0 0.57 meters. Because we should note that the units of diopter is 1 over meter. questions on that. We should also make note that over here, when we do this, we get a positive number. When we get a positive number, that tells us that we have a converging lens. So the way that I think about it, if I'm shining light through a lens, I expect the light to kind of, um, I think about it like burning ants or burning a leaf or something. I expect the light to focus on the opposite side of that lens. 
So I expect the light to be over here. So, so that seems positive to me. Let's do another example. Let's do number 39. In number 39, we have something slightly different. Number 39, we have the prescription for new eyeglasses is negative 4.5D. So my power of my lens is negative 4.50 diopters, one over meters. What will their focal length be? So how do I find their focal length? Same thing, and what did I do last time? Focal length is one over P. So I do one divided by negative 4.5 D and I get a focal length. What do I get when I do that? What's one divided by negative 4.5? Negative 0 0.222, 0 0.22 meters. So that's my focal length. This time it's negative. What the F? I didn't record that. Did we chat, mate? What's going on? Why is it negative? It's a diverging lens. So the focal length, the focal point is on the front side of the lens. So that negative tells you you have a diverging lens. Any questions on that? Lenses and mirrors are fun. I like lenses and mirrors. They're puzzles. We should specify. They're fun for physics. <laughs> I don't go home on the weekend and do lens and mirrors and physics questions. <laughs> so in problem number 40, this is a little different than the diopters. So they ask us, how far from the lens must the film in a camera be if the lens has a 35 millimeter focal length? So our focal length is 35 millimeters. Uh, and it's being used to photograph a flower that's 75 centimeters away. Okay, so flower is 75 centimeters away. So with lenses, there's a specific equation that describes how lenses work and describes how different parts of lenses are related to each other. What is that equation called? It has a name. It's called the lens equation. So this ain't rocket science. And what is the lens equation? One over GO plus one over DI equals one over F. DO? is the distance of your object. DI is the distance of your image. And F is your focal length. So they gave us some numbers. They said, uh, we're, we want to know how far from the lens must the film in a camera be if the lens has a 35 millimeter focal length and it's being used to photograph a flower that's 75 centimeters away. So that's 75 centimeters. What is that? Is that the distance of the object you're taking a picture of? Or is that the distance of the image? That's got to be the object. And then does it make sense that the distance of the image is going to be where film is? Does that make sense? So the purpose of a camera is to take a picture to make an image of something. You want to make that image on the film itself. So the DI is what we're looking for. I was given F, I was given DO, now I can plug it in. Tricky thing on these questions, and it's not even so tricky, it's just keeping things straight. Let's solve this for DI. So I have 1 divided by DI is equal to 1 divided by F minus 1 over DO. So I'm doing the algebra to move the DO over to the other side. 
Now, how do I find di? I need to get di. Right now, this is the equation for 1 over di. over here and then I have to take all of this and divide it over here. So di is equal to 1 divided by 1 over f minus 1 over do. So you remember when we did uh, capacitors and we did resistors and you did the flippy flop method? That's what you're doing here. So you can do all of this, get your answer, and flip it. Or you can do it all like this if you just do 1 divided by 1 over f minus 1 over do. So for the, uh, for that first one, we would just do the answer divided by 1, and that would be the So if you use this one, then you would do 1 divided by the answer. Oh, okay. So that's how you flip it. Because that divided by 1 would just give you that. So if you plug and chug all your numbers in, you would find di is equal to 3.7 centimeters. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's plug in all these numbers. Di equals 1 divided by 1 over 3.5 minus 1 over 75. And I'm going to ask a question. See here, what did I plug? I plugged it in 1 over 3.5. Where did that come from? What is that supposed to be? That should be 1 over f. Well, what's my f? 35. Why did I plug in 3.5? F is 35. Converted to centimeters. Because my DO was given in centimeters. Do I have to convert to centimeters? I can convert to millimeters. I can convert to centimeters. I can put everything into meters. As long as I have everything in the same units, it doesn't matter. You can pick whichever unit you like the best meters, centimeters, millimeters, whichever one. Just make sure that your F and DO or F and DI are in the same units. Okay. So we have to be consistent with our units. Let's do this again. Let's do this with number uh, 42. Unless we have questions. Do we have questions on number 40? All right, let's do number 42. Number 42, we have a doctor that examines a mole with the 15 centimeter focal length magnifying glass held 13.5 centimeters from the mole. Very exciting <laughs> question. Doctor is examining your mole. They give us the focal length of 15 centimeters. And then they give us this length of, what did they say? 13.5 centimeters. <coughs> what is that? I'm holding my magnifying glass 13.5 centimeters from the mole. Is that the distance of the image or the distance of the object? That's the object. Because the object I'm looking at is the mole. Very exciting, doctor. Uh, then part A actually gives it away for us. Part A asks, where is the image? Okay, so we need to find DI. 1 over F equals 1 over DI plus 1 over DO. <laughs> Thank you. So I get DI 
is 1 divided by 1 over f minus 1 over do. 1 divided by 1 over 15 minus 1 over 13.5. Plug and chug all your numbers in, I get what di is. I get that di is equal to negative 135 centimeters. Okay, uh, what's that negative mean? It's divergent. It's divergent. So where is this image? Uh, so when we're talking about lenses, um, you have a lens and you can form an image on the back side of the lens or the front side of the lens. So where is the image formed? Front side or back side? Front side of the lens. Next question we're asked. We are asked, what is its magnification? So how much is this mole magnified for this doctor? who clearly leads an exciting life. How big does the mole get? How do I find magnification? Yep. And there's a negative out front of that. Negative di over do. So we plug in our negative. Negative of negative 135 over do. Do was 13.5. And now the magnification of our mole is 10 times. So we are magnifying the mole by 10 times. Yay. Science. The next part asks us to get really gross. Uh, how big is the image of a 5 millimeter diameter mole? So how big does this mole get? How would I figure that out? The diameter of the mole is five millimeters. If it's magnified by 10 times, how big does it look? How do I figure that out? Five times 10. So it becomes how big? 50 millimeter mole. I think this is more for the med school students. I don't know how much PTs deal with moles. I would hope not too often. Okay. Let's do one more problem. Let's do number 44. Problem number 44, we're back to a camera. So we have a camera with the 50 millimeter focal length lens that's being used to photograph a person standing three meters away. So what variables are those? Camera, 50 millimeter focal length lens being used to photograph a person standing three meters away. What letters do I know? Focal length, F. I know we have an F, all of your grades. 50 millimeters. What else do I know? Did I get a D.O. What is D.O.? That is the person that is standing 3.0 meters away. They keep giving us the same variables. Are you always going to get those two variables? No. Absolutely not. What other variables could I give you? I could give you F and DI. I could give you DO and DI. Same exact approach, though. Okay? Uh, part A, how far from the lens must the film be? So I need to know where I put the film so I get a nice image. So I need to know the image distance. DI is now, we should be familiar with, 1 divided by 1 over F minus 1 over DO. Convert all of your units. 
make sure they're all in the same units. Uh, I actually did everything in meters, so I get 5.08 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. Part B. Uh, if the film is 36 millimeters high, what fraction of a 1.75 millimeter tall person will fit on it? Right, film has a specific size, yeah? The film in your camera, your camera's small. So how do I fit a person that's, how tall was this person? This person was uh, 1.75 meters tall, a little over one and a half meters tall. It's about five feet tall. How do I fit a five foot tall person onto the film in the camera? What has to happen for the magnification? If I have a person that's one, one and a half meters tall, 1.75 meters tall, and I take a picture of them, the person on the picture has to be shrunken down, right? So the magnification has to be less than one. I have to shrink them. So first step will be to figure out what is this whole magnification? So how do I find the magnification that this camera is giving me? Negative DI over DO. So I plug in those variables, negative di, which is negative 5.08 times 10 to the negative 2. And I divide by do, distance of the object was 3 meters. And I get negative 1.695 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, does that magnification make sense? Is that going to make my person smaller? Yes or no? Does this magnification mean that my person is going to be smaller? Yes or no? Yeah? No? How can I figure out how big the person is going to be based on this? Take the person's height, multiply it by that magnification. So I can figure out what the person's new height. So let's do that and see if we actually got a smaller number. So I do 1.75 meters, multiply that by the magnification of negative 1.695 times 10 to the negative 2. Plug those numbers in. What do you got? Bust out a calculator. Actually do it. Make sure you can calculate this. gone over eight problems that you're just not taking out of I need to work on my teaching. What do we got? 0 0.029 meters. So my person went from being 1.75 meters tall to 0 0.029 meters tall negative. Did I shrink? Yeah. I shrunk a lot. So we did shrink down the image. So that answer makes sense. What about the negative? Why did I get the negative? Let me catch this from the reading. Did we actually do the reading? How many of you actually read the book? I shouldn't get this on, vid on video. It's in the book. It tells you what that negative means. What does that negative mean in the magnification? This negative right here means your image is inverted. The typical way we see this drawn is you would draw uh, something called an optical axis and I would draw like an arrow pointing up. Then I would draw a lens and I would draw some light coming in and I would draw the image on the opposite side. The arrow would then be pointing down. So that is an inverted image. 
Okay? So now, how much of a person, can we fit an entire person on this film if the film is equal to 35 millimeter film? So 35 millimeter tells you how big the film itself literally is. Can I fit the whole person on this film, 35 millimeters? How, how much of the person can I fit on the film? How many millimeters of this person can I fit? How tall is this person in millimeters? We just calculated it. What's the person's height? What's the size of my image? That's their actual height. And then their image is how big? 0 0.029. How many millimeters is that? How do I convert meters into millimeters? This is physics one, two. Damn it, it never goes away. Three decimal places. So what do we got? Other way. One, two, three. So this person is 29 millimeters tall in the image. If the film is 35 millimeters tall, how much of the person can I fit? I can fit the whole person. They can wear a giant ass hat and I can still fit them in. They could be holding a huge spear. They could be wearing a Black Panther crown that's 3D printed. Do you know they've 3D printed the props for Black Panther? We could do it in the lab. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. No, it just means your picture is upside down. If you do photography and you do film and you develop your picture, what you'll find is your pictures are upside down, but you don't really realize it because you just turn the picture around. <laughs> also happens in astronomy. Astronomy, all of our images are upside down. But who cares? It's a star. It's a circle. 